Alright, time now is 11.45 a.m. on August 13th. We're like halfway through August already, what the fuck. I slept from 5 a.m. till um, 11.15. But I went back to bed for 15 more minutes. So, yeah. Um, today's gonna be kind of fun. I'm gonna go adventure with Thomas probably with the last time. Last time ever. We're gonna have lunch. I have no idea where are we gonna have lunch. Um, hopefully somewhere cheap. And Thomas would concur. And then we're going to go to the Huntington Gardens at Pasadena. And we'll have a wee bit of an adventure there. And it's going to be very interesting. And that's pretty much it. Uh, Yeah, that's pretty much it for today. I hope the chocolate milk is not spoiled. Because I'm, not, I'm going to use it to eat cereal right now. Um, Yeah, I don't know. Um... I'm oh, goddamn. I'm so tired. I'm so tired. Um, thinking about moving and thinking about yeah, just thinking about moving. Actually, that's like the big thing on my mind right now. Thank God Leslie isn't the big thing on my mind right now. It's something else. Um, I'm gonna get confirmation from Justin or Cliff today. I don't know why Cliff is so busy, but Cliff is so busy doing things. Like, a couple days ago, Cliff was editing something with Kiara, and then, yeah, I don't know. So I'm going to double confirm the shooting dates with Justin and Cliff. On top of that, I will have to ask Jonah when is he available to drive me to move, to help me move. Um... Because that is very, very important. And that will really decide when I can move to the Airbnb. So after these two questions get answered, then I shall plan which Airbnb I want to go to. Again, if it's not in unit wash and dryer, that sucks, I know. But small sacrifice for a greater good, I, I guess. Small sacrifice indeed. Um... And um, the public storage is not as important as the Airbnb. For all I care, we can do the public storage after we move into an Airbnb. But not preferred, of course. Um, but yeah, I'm laying out a bit of a schedule as well for my last week. Uh, not my last. I, yeah, my last week in this apartment, which is next week. Or next, next, I guess. Um, and, uh, yeah, again, after I get confirmation from Justin and from the church folk or whoever can drive me, um, then I shall proceed to the next steps. I have already created a giant Google spreadsheet last night where I will essentially inventory literally every single goddamn item I have. It's a good practice. I did the same thing when I was leaving Hong Kong and coming to LA, even though it didn't help that much. Um, but it's still good to have sort of like an idea. Um, yeah, and then um, that's pretty much just it. That's pretty much it. Um, I'm low-key not very excited to go to film set tomorrow because I know I'll have to wake up early and whatever and it's going to be tiring and I'll spend the whole day not doing anything be because I'll be on set but at the same time I don't want to do nothing you know so you know kind of conflicted feelings but yeah I'm going to finish watching House Moving Castle last 40 minutes I'll film a review and then and then I'll go with Thomas. That's the plan for today. That is the plan. All right, time now is 12.43 after midnight. Um, Yeah, I just had dinner, which is just a bowl of ramen with some bok choy and fried pork slices. Really simple dinner because I don't need anything complicated. Um, Yeah, just... um. 
going to talk a little bit about today, I guess. So today I hung out with Thomas probably either the last time I'll ever see him or the second last time. But, you know, I guess it's pretty interesting. So we met up at 1.30. It was right outside of my apartment. And even though last Sunday left or last Saturday left off a little bit awkward because um, because of the whole, oh, you, you owe me 10 cents thing, which I think is really stupid. Um, it still went on fine. We're like, I wanted to have lunch. Um, so he's like, where do you want? And I'm like, I don't know. And he's like, Raising Cane's. How about Raising Cane's? I've never tried that. And, and I'm like, yeah, sure. And it's cool because Raising Cane's are few and far between in LA. There's one in El Segundo and the other closest one is Burbank. And there's no fucking way I'll ever get to Burbank without a car. So the fact that Thomas is driving and he's expressed interest in trying it, let's go. So I and Thomas went to Burbank to have Raising Cane's and took a while to find parking, but we entered the place and we had the meal. It's really cheap, 12, 12 and a half dollars tax included for a 1300 calorie worth meal. It's got coleslaw, Texas bread, which is like salted butter bread, which tastes really fucking good. Four chicken tenders, some crinkle cut fries, really good sour sauce. And I had that with sweet tea. Um, and it was a really good meal. Um, it's a little dry, but, and I wish there were more vegetables, but overall it's really good, really satisfied. And then afterwards we went to the Huntington Gardens and it turns out it costs, it's not just a fucking garden. Unlike the Walled City Park in Hong Kong, uh, which is completely for you, just fucking walk in, right? It's a garden. It's just some grass and water and rocks, okay? But in here, you have to pay that shit and it's $24 for student tickets. I'm like, fine. So pay $24 and it's like Disneyland. It's The place is huge. Take Walt City Garden and multiply that by maybe seven or eight and you have the Huntington Garden. It's fucking massive. It really feels like Disneyland. And it's really well-groomed place. It's really beautiful and gorgeous. And it ends up really surprising me. Like, holy shit. This place is really, like, one of the hidden gems of the LA area. And Thomas freaking loved it. Usually, Thomas finds everything disappointing. But Thomas actually really liked this place. So, we right off the bat went to Chinese Gardens. We had one, out, one and a half hours left before the gardens closed down. So, so it was 3.30 p.m. And the gardens closed at 5 p.m. So, we had one and a half hours to go through... Some of the major points we went to the chinese garden and that in and of itself is already huge and i'd say it's really beautiful looking um yeah for the most part you can tell it's authentic because a bunch of taiwanese people made it so it's really like it actually feels authentic i mean there are some small details they could add to make the garden more chinese i guess but overall like they even got the right type of fish like, where the hell did they even find that? So it was really well done. And then we walked over to the Japanese garden. And that was a lot more underwhelming. Um, it's a lot smaller, a lot less structured. And very not colorful. And there are no Japanese signs. In the Chinese garden, you get signs that are actually in Chinese. Like Chinese words. Uh, but anyways, then we went to uh, the European art building. Which is pretty cool. I'm not that big of a fan of most of the artwork they're all from the same era of um of romantic art and um can i even can i even consider rococo uh, but they're all portraits mostly and there are some pretty interesting um art pieces here there are some renaissance um, some neoclassism that looks pretty cool, but overall it's just kind of meh. Uh, and then we went to the Huntington Library, but by that time we already, we only had like 15 minutes left. So we can only explore two rooms and one of them actually has a gigantic scroll, uh, which is like a Buddhist scripture 
from the Song Dynasty from uh, the mid 11th century. That's really freaking cool. And it's amazing that I could literally look at it and I can read it. I can't pronounce it, but I can read it because the Chinese characters are standardized since the Song Dynasty. So literally a thousand years later, a whole century later, I can still freaking read that thing. And that's crazy. Um, but yeah, that was a really good experience and it was really hot. I was really sweaty, but I think I, I had a really good experience there. I enjoyed it. I miss adventures like this. Um, and then afterwards, we could just go home, but honestly, it's still early. I'm prepared to waste a bunch more time. Anyways, Thomas asked me where I want to go. And out of nowhere, I'm like, how about yogurt land? And it's just like, not even a joke, but like, just, you know, just a saying for the sake of saying. Like, it's a whatever. I know we're probably not going to get yogurt, but like frozen yogurt. But you know what? Just yogurt land. I mean, we're, in pa we're near Pasadena. Might as well. Or I don't know, just whatever. And so Thomas actually drove me to Overland. At first, he's like, mm, I don't want to spend money, but we can go. We'll check it out. And he went. And so we actually went to Pasadena for uh, Yogurtland. And this is the second time I've been to um, this uh, Yogurtland. The first time was back in May last year. And I made a mini vlog out of that. But this time, um, I'm with Thomas. And we went into the shop. And Thomas said, oh. I'm not going to get anything. And I'm like, what? I thought we were both going to get something. And he's like, nope, I don't want to spend more money. And I'm like, okay, fine. And I was planning to not get anything because by his logic, I can, if one person eats food and the other just stares at them, it's awkward, which is true. That's why like, when he gets food in McDonald's, he wants me to get food too. But this time he's he's doing that double double standards thing. And then he's forcing me. He's like, nope, you have to get it. We came all the way here. You have to get it. And I'm like, come on, what? And he's like crossing his arms and he's being awkward. And he's like, well, um, you know, we came all the way here. And plus you're beginning to piss me off. Uh, get something, get something now, get something. And he's like smiling and he knows it's awkward. And he's like, get something, get something. And I'm like, fine, whatever. And it's by weight. So if I get only a little bit of stuff, it's not going to cost that much. So I got like a little mango frozen yogurt with a bit of a bunch of topping, like gummy bears and like little canned fruit chunks, whatever. It's really good. Three and a half bucks, $3.69, I think. Um, so it's not even that expensive. So I just ate it in front of him and he's just really awkward and quiet. And after that, he's like, can we go now? Can we go now? And I'm like, yeah. He's like, let's go. So it was so lame. And I'm sure he's even more awkward. Like, I don't feel awkward. I'm enjoying this frozen yogurt. And then after that, he just drove me home. Um, And he's like, are you going to hang? What are you doing next Saturday? And I'm like, I don't know, but probably I'll have to take a rest. And he's like, um, so I and Miles are going on to a hike in the morning. First of all, I don't wake up in the fucking morning. Please don't do that. Second of all, uh, I got to go to a film set on Sunday. So this is, no, I'm sorry. I, I probably need to take a rest. And Tom's like, but it's like the last time. And I'm like, okay, maybe, maybe. But yeah, honestly, I don't really care about Thomas. I know I, I've been hanging out with him for one year and five months. And aside from Potter, I think Thomas might be my most long running friend. But honestly, I've never really cared about him anyways. He's always been a really goofy guy. Uh, I only hang out with him because I feel bad for him. But really, he's kind of a goofy guy. And, and you know, he's bad at socializing. He's bad at being kind. He doesn't know how, to, how the world works. And he's just stuck in his own world all the time. Um, I'm glad I got to hang out with him. I'm glad we both can have a very great experience, but I got to move on. Like since March, the one month after I've met the guy, I already had thoughts about abandoning him and moving on. I already had thoughts about like, yeah, I and him won't even like stay being friends for long. Like, I'll immediately find more other people. And I feel like it's uncharacteristic of me to act as cold-blooded, but also 
it's learned. Like other people have treated me this way. If people like Pepper and Leslie and I don't know, like JT can treat me this way, you know, I'm going to make friends with him for a couple of weeks and then I'll abandon him. Then surely I can do th the same to others, right? But I don't want to. But, you know, Thomas is a goofy guy. So honestly, I won't even feel that bad losing him. I mean, honestly, I've lost so many people already. Like, I'm beginning to be desensitized to the idea of losing people. Like, again, like, I've lost so many people already. Like, people from Hong Kong, I just lost so many of them. It's like, I don't even feel bad for people anymore. I'm always ready to, like, move on and be alone and shit. So, yeah, you know, I, uh, that's that. Anyways, after I came home again... I had no motivation. First of all, I went to the bathroom and then took a shower. And I had no motivation and I did nothing. And then I had dinner and I still had no motivation. And it's like 1 a.m. right now already. Fuck. But one thing I did, though, is I spoke to Justin a little bit. I spoke with Justin and Cliff to ask them about, you know, still scheduling stuff. Like, I don't know when I can watch Old Boy with Cliff. Or Chunking Express. I don't know if I can, um, you know, when am I leaving? Because if Justin's short film happens in late September, it really depends on when exactly so that, you know, I know when to leave because I want to be there because I want to, I'm, I'm scared of missing out because I want to have my credit. And Justin said, so I asked Justin, hey, hey, and I don't want to bother him, you know, I don't want to be an annoying guy. So I, I was like, hey, hey, uh, just to double confirm, are you making a short film mid to late September? Because I'm planning my schedule for September. And he's like, wait, I got to ask Cliff and Ariel. Asking Cliff makes sense because Cliff is Justin's best friend. But Ariel is like, oh, I mean, I get it. But also, I am closer to Justin and Cliff than Ariel was. And why? Why is Ariel suddenly getting the producer title and not me? But anyways, who cares, right? So Justin asked them and Justin said, oh yeah, Ariel told me that September is too soon because apparently this is a way bigger project. And both Cliff and Ariel are extremely serious about the project and they want to raise 10K, which is fucking insane. 10K, Thomas was going to raise 700 bucks for his short film and he gave up because it's too expensive, 700 how are we raising 10 fucking thousand for Justin Short? I don't know. So, of course, if we start the Indigo campaign now, and then the September, that's not going to make it. That's not going to happen. And that's both good news and bad news. Good news is, okay, bad news is, it's too fucking late. I I will be gone by then. I can't stay more than September 25th. So chances are I won't be producer for Justin Short. Not chances. It's straight up true. It's a fact now. I'm not going to be producer for Justin Short. Even though I was almost a producer. And um, I'm not going to be there. The good thing is this means I have less obligation to stay. I can go home even earlier now. I think the latest thing I should do is September 15th, like the screening for Ashes of Time, but in 35 millimeter. But after that, I should just fucking leave. So my new date to leave is actually September 17th. Um, and yeah, I have Andrew Short film and that goes to September 13th. So yeah, that's still like two whole weeks extra of like nothing but Andrew short film and a couple movie screenings floating weeds and ashes of time but after that I'm gonzos which is nice actually I guess quite nice I want to go home even earlier you know when I realize that it's two and a half months it's nice but also how about three months let's stay three fucking months September 17th to December 17th isn't that nice like to have three months in Hong Kong? Like that's nice. 
you know, I just want to spend my days, go back to the void years, go back to the boring years of 2021, the boring days of 2020 and 2021, just relax, just chill, you know, go out on adventures, eat good food, go work part-time, tutor, get onto film sets, know more people, speak more Cantonese. I, I'm so excited to go home, actually. I really... I'm really so ready to abandon everything here. I really am. The same way Michelle was really ready to abandon everything um, from this community college to go to Long Beach. I'm, I'm ready to, to go. I'm just really ready. So, you know, I'm excited to go home. I really am. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it for today. I really have no motivation to do a single goddamn thing. But I should really continue to plan out my move out and whatever. And uh, I spoke with Jonah a little bit to talk to him a little bit about moving and helping me move. And he's like, yes, I will I can help out, which is great because I definitely need help. But um, yeah, and my mom told me that, you know, he's she's prepared to give me like a part time job at her own company. And I can work like just two days in a week and an hour. I don't know how much, but it's at least I'm gaining some profit, which is stupid from my mom's company. I want to do more stuff. So, um, yeah, you know, yeah. Um, um, yeah, I'm excited to go home. I really, really am. I want people to think that I'm staying just to realize I'm leaving. I want people to think I'm leaving to USC just to think, just to realize, oh yeah, he has to stay because he's admitted in spring just to realize I'm not even going to be here. I'm going to be in Hong Kong. It's going to be amazing. I can't wait to leave everything behind. There are still good people, you know, Michelle, Cliff and Justin. I spoke with Justin Moore, so that conversation didn't just end there. Um, I and Justin talked more about like my own short film, and I, I I essentially told him like I had to pay nearly nine hundred U.S. dollars for my short film, but I finished it in like half a month, like pre-production plus production, half a month, I'm done. And if Justin's short film is similar to mine, and Justin's short is like fifteen pages, so basically like my short film, my short film is seventeen minutes, so somewhere near that same ballpark. I don't need that much time or money to make it. All I need is image and audio. Boom, and I roll. And being more professional and having a bigger crew and bigger budget is fucking awesome, by the way. And I wish I have that. But it doesn't have to be that extreme, you know. So I basically sent Justin, like, a screenshot of, like, my Google spreadsheet I made when I was doing pre-production for love and death. And it's literally one Google spreadsheet, not even multiple spreadsheets, like multiple tabs, just one. And it's just the shot list and then underneath the schedule and then underneath small little budget table and boom, one screenshot and the entire production, the entire pre-production is there. That's all you need. That's all I needed. I had so many family locations. I had like 10 locations, 11 locations. I don't even know, but Three shooting days, we're done. Each shooting day is about eight to nine hours. Boom, we're done. We even get good ass lunch. We don't even need catering. Restaurants all over Hong Kong, they all taste great. You know? So, um, yeah, you know. And Justin was legit impressed. He's like, wow, you did all that? That's really impressive. And I, I don't take compliments usually. So I'm like, really? Thanks. And then he, he really likes Cantonese swear words. So he's like, man, you should have included more bad words. And I'm like, yeah, I wanted to, but I think it was good enough. But yeah, I hope I can still help out in some capacity. Maybe if they... Okay, here are my predictions, right? They either don't reach the 10k and they give up, which will probably happen. Or they do miraculously... Or they like, I don't know, like work around the script. Like it doesn't have to be 10K. It could be 9K, it could be 8K. It could be cheaper. 
they work around a script and they do eventually make it. But because Justin and Ariel and Cliff are all going to be in film 33, they can't make that until after film 33 is over for them. Then in that case, I will be there because I will come back in December. So, uh, yippee ki yay. Somehow at the end of the day, I'm helping out again. Maybe not as producer, maybe as scripty, maybe as UPM, or maybe some production office guy, maybe just a PA, maybe just a bystander, an observer, I don't know, but hey, maybe I can still be there. But it really doesn't matter, because how many people can say they've made sex short films? You know? I don't want to sound cocky, but after speaking to so many people in film school, I still realize that I'm on top of my game. I'm extremely far from the best, but goddamn do I know what I'm doing. <laughs> also, I don't, I'm not sure if we'll go shooting tomorrow for the film set. Because I haven't received any call sheets. Unless tomorrow is another overnight shoot, then I don't know if I'll even agree to go or not. Um, but yeah. All right, time now is 1.04 p.m. on August 14th. Um, yeah, so I slept from 5.20 a.m. till like 12.30. Um, I dreamt that Cliff told me that the Chunking Express tickets are sold out. Um, so I woke up naturally, but shortly after I woke up, like literally two, three seconds after I woke up, suddenly I hear keys outside of my apartment and, um, a person came in and I don't know, it's like the third, fourth time some random person enters my apartment this week. And I don't know, I could be hallucinating again. Like at this point, I have no idea, but I think this is legit. I think I have a new roommate. It's a woman. I don't know of what ethnicity I can't really tell, but. I don't know. I hope it's an Asian woman, but, but it wouldn't matter anyways. Like I'm leaving and less than two weeks okay are they gone oh they're still not gone they're opening and closing the same door for six i don't i have no idea what's happening so i will find out once i'm once i go outside but um yeah, so it appears that today we don't have a shoot day. I looked at the call sheet from last Thursday and the call sheet actually has advanced schedule so that you'll be able to tell like when the next shooting day is. They don't tell you the date. They only say oh, day 15 of the shoot starts at 9 a.m. I don't know when day 15 is, so I have no idea. I don't know, it's kind of weird. I wish they could tell me the date. Um, but yeah, it, it appears there are no shoots today and uh, I'm probably staying at home in my apartment the whole day. Hopefully I am much more productive today. Hopefully I plan out stuff, get the Airbnb done, um, do reviews, edit videos, chill, and that's it. That's pretty much it for today. I, uh, yeah, so right now, given that I pretty much can't be producer for Justin, uh, I guess I'm just going to leave a little earlier. So I'm going to leave on August, uh, uh, on September 18th. So the last thing I need to do is not Ashes of Time at Super Movie Club. The last thing I need to do is actually September 16th, which is the last day for Andrew to shoot. 
And so that's that. And 17th, I need a whole day to pack up stuff, I guess, to prepare to leave. So 18 would be a good day to just go. So I think uh, September 18 would be a good date. So I think we're settled on September 18th, which is not that big of a difference from September 22nd. But given that I'm the latest I can go is September um, 25th, going 18th is actually like a whole week earlier. So that's nice, actually. So yeah, I think it's settled. September 18th, it is. Um, <laughs> I'm excited. What can I say? Um, imagine if I stay behind just to work on Justin Short. You know, that would be insane. But I'm not going to do that. Um, I think given how busy Cliff seems, because he's really unresponsive usually, and, you know, I think I'm just going to go watch Old Boy with Michelle. I don't know, but that's more likely. And then, um, yeah, and that's pretty much it. Like, again, all I care about right now is just the Airbnb and moving. And um, that's it. That's pretty much it. Yeah, I don't have much else to talk about. Um. I hope this roommate is an Asian person, though it, she has a friend, I think, who's waiting outside of the door, and that friend is a Latina. I think, I don't, I don't even know. I need to go outside to find out, really. I'm so hungry for breakfast. I don't know why. Uh, but yeah, simple. I'm also going to start planning out, like, what restaurants do I want to get food from and when? Um, because again, like I said, I want to go to Sawtell multiple times just to get food from there because I'm leaving. So, you know, that's that. But I'm pretty sure I don't need to leave the apartment like the whole day today. I can just stay and chill. I think that's totally fine. Um, yeah, that's... That's pretty much it. I also actually started writing the Visions of Darkness feature film. Like, not only the outline, but I actually started writing it. Um, so, um, that's cool. Creative juice is really flowing nowadays. I don't know what's going on with me lately. Even though I've been pretty unproductive, unproductive in the last couple of days. But for the last week or, or so... Like, I have been so flowing with creative juices. Like, I keep having new story, not new story ideas, but ideas for my own stories and, like, scene ideas and whatever. Like, it's pretty wild, actually. I don't know what's going on with me. It's like, suddenly, I'm really inspired by everything. Um, yeah, I also did not have time to watch Vinland Saga last night. I watched half an episode and then I just, I dipped, but yeah, that's it. All right. Time now is, um, 9.38 PM. Um, I'm going to go cook myself some dinner now. So today I spent the whole day at home, did nothing, didn't do any reviews, but I find myself in a more productive mood. So my speculations this morning was correct i have a new roommate that's why i'm talking so quietly right now um but yeah i have a new roommate and um i met her very early in the morning um early in the morning as in like 2 p.m something because i was gonna make myself um a peanut butter toast with banana i bought four bananas and one of them already got moldy but anyways i um I got, um, made myself a toast, and I think as I was, like, I don't know, I don't even know, but, like, at some point, I saw them, and they went out for breakfast, but they came back, and as they were going back, it is, um, an Asian girl, an Asian-American girl, and her friend who is a Latina. And 
I was cooking or, or doing something. I was cleaning my hands in the kitchen and the door got unlocked and they walked in and I was like, hi. And it's like my ninth roommate or something in this apartment. I think my eighth roommate. And I'm pretty sure the Asian American girl is the roommate. So I'm like, hi, are you the new roommate? And without asking me my name or whatever or being nice, they they seem kind of like weirded out and scared. And they're like, um, you're leaving, right? And I'm like, yeah, in two weeks. And... And they continued walking, and I'm like, my name's Enoch, by the way. And then the Asian-American girl was like, my name's Ash. Okay, that was kind of awkward. I think they're kind of freaked out, and rightfully so, because the kitchen counter was extremely dirty and messy, and, you know, I'm a lonely, single, college student, male, who's getting over a breakup. Like, of course, you know? Of course it's going to be a fucking mess. Um, It's got, like empty boxes of spinach and like plastic bags and tons of like five empty cans like soda cans and another empty can and it was a total freaking mess um and then i'm like okay awkward and then a little bit later i guess a few hours later as i was about to make myself lunch at around 6 p.m which was miso soup with rice and pork chop microwave it's not great but whatever who cares um, and then I saw the girl again, and the girl came out and was a lot friendlier when she was alone. She asked me, so how long have you been staying here? And I was like, oh, I've been staying here since April last year. And he's like, okay, so, um, and then she said something along the lines of, um, uh, how about the other roommate? And I'm like what and she said that when she rented this place the the lease agent the leasing agent told her that there are already two people living here and i'm like no i'm pretty sure i was i'm living alone oh yeah that's what i said i i told her like oh you know but now i'm alone like all the roommates sort of moved out a couple weeks ago and i've been living alone for like a couple weeks and I apologize that it's dirty. And she's like, oh, it's no worries. I, I, I like to clean anyways. And then um, she said, wait, you've been living alone? I thought there's another person. And I'm like, really? Cause that's weird because I don't hear any vo- any noise or, or whatever. It's kind of strange. Um... So that's kind of weird. And I said maybe it's someone who rented the room but hasn't really moved in yet. Um, And then um, after that, she asked me if I'm a UCLA student. And I'm like, no, I mean, why are you asking that? And I explained to her, oh, I'm from this community college and I'm transferring to USC, but I'm actually from Hong Kong, so I'm going back very soon. And she's like, oh, okay, that's cool. <laughs> She asked me if I'm a junior and I had to think for a while and I'm like, yeah, technically, but I'll be repeating junior again. I'll go through junior two times. Um, <coughs> and then, um, yeah, and then, um, she, and I asked her like, so she said she's um, part-time student, part-time Stanford and part-time community college, the same community college as me, which is crazy. Um, and I'm like, wow, what's her major? And she's like, biology. And I said, I'm film production. And she said she knows a friend from USC who also does film production. Um, which is pretty intriguing. But also USC film is like huge. So obviously there are tons of people from there. So it's not like that big of a coincidence anyways. Um, and I asked her, so are you like junior, senior, and she's like, no, I'm freshman. And I thought she meant like, she's going from freshman to sophomore. So first year to second year of college. No, she she is going to the first year of college. So she asked me how old I am. And I'm like, about to be 21. And she's like, I'm 18. 
I thought she's older than me. Like, by the way she looks, she looks 24. So suddenly I act a lot older. <laughs> Knowing that I'm older than her? What the fuck? So this is... I guess that's how you can tell between someone who's Asian and someone who's Asian American. Asian Americans are basically like Americans. They look older than they should be. And then Asians look younger than they should be. Um, without this mustache, I probably look 17. So, you know, it all comes down to that. And then she starts cleaning. She actually, like, got this sponge and she started, like, wiping down the stove, which was a total fucking horrible mess. And then she started, like, throwing things in the trash. And I saw that happening and I'm like, okay... You know, so I helped out and I apologize a couple more times. I'm like, yeah, I'm sorry. And I'm, thank you for helping me clean up. And he's like, oh, no worries. And then, um, yeah. Yeah, and then um, that's pretty much just it. And then at some point in the afternoon, not even afternoon, at some point at 7 p.m., suddenly someone knocked on the door and it's like, a Latina, a woman, and three big buff Latino men marched into the apartment and said, oh, we're going to have to paint the two other vacant rooms. And I'm like, I have a roommate already in a room. And they're like, okay, one vacant room. So I don't know what the fuck they're doing. I really don't. It's crazy how people are entering and exiting my apartment constantly. But, um... Yeah, so there's that. Pretty intriguing, I guess, but it wouldn't have mattered. This would be my shortest living roommate in history because I will be gone in two weeks anyways. Um, but it's good to know if finally an Asian girl shows up uh, to this apartment. Um, so, you know, finally. Um, but also Asian-American, not really Asian-Asian, you know. Um... Yeah, aside from that, um, Cliff is super freaking busy, I think. He's not looking at my story, so I'm guessing that he's really busy. So, and I found out that apparently AMC Century City isn't playing Old Boy. I thought all AMCs are playing it. That's not true. So, this means that the only way I can watch it or rewatch it is on August 16th at Landmark New World. And since Cliff is for sure not available on August 16th, I'm like, you know what, fuck it, I'm gonna ask Michelle. Since I know Michelle asked me multiple times if she can watch with me, and I turned her down multiple times because, hey, I'm watching with Cliff. So, um, we coordinated together, and um, we have purchased our tickets for Landmark New World, old boy. So, we did it. So that's cool. So, yeah, I guess another small thing would be the L word, Leslie. Um, I still fucking love her so much. It sucks. I wish I could stop loving her. She made an Instagram story, I think this morning. And she was wearing um, long baggy pants, as she always does, like gray. And then also like this very loose sort of sweater. But it was like, not, not like sweater, it was like jacket, you know. And then underneath is this wooly, this pink wooly crop top. And I could see her belly. And I could see like, like it's not like, yeah. <laughs> how to describe this? You also see her collar. Like it's a little bit more revealing than this, but it doesn't go all the way down. It's not, it's not like a not like a cleavage or anything but it's like it's a little bit more revealing and it's a crop top and i just and she she's it's a mirror selfie and so her phone is covering half her face and then her other hand is doing this she's doing this or or, or i think yeah this she's doing this and then her korean roommate who's shorter than her did this um, and I just thought to myself, God damn, she's so cute. Fuck. I hate her so much. 
And I also made like a few Instagram stories, you know, last night, because why the fuck not? I made a, I reposted my letterbox rating for Howl's Moving Castle, nine out of 10. And then I posted a bunch of photos about, you know, the gardens that I visited yesterday. And Leslie liked four of my Instagram stories in a row, like four in a fucking row. Uh, which is, uh, when is the last time that had happened? I mean, way back in early May, you know. And then just now, I think 20 minutes ago, she continues posting these stories. Um, <coughs> actually, just two more stories. One story is a repost from her roommate um, because she's, I guess, a photographer now. So she's taking photos of her roommate, like Leslie taking a photo of her roommate. And then another photo is Leslie herself. And she's smiling and... She has magenta hair again, like she goes through hair rotations, but it's not like a streak of magenta hair, like half her hair is magenta and it's also like stuck with stickers and all sorts of fancy stuff. It's like, it's like the Lucky Charm cereal. Um, <laughs> and she's smiling and the sun was setting in the back and her hair was a mess. And she's holding a film camera in her hand. And I just thought, God damn, she's so cute. Like, just imagine whoever gets her. Whoever gets to date her. Imagine how lucky they are to, to look at your own phone. And go to Instagram. And look at her story. And she's so cute and alive and interesting. And you say to yourself... She's with me. Like, is, isn't that like a fucking... Isn't that amazing? Wouldn't that be fucking amazing? I hate her so much. I want to be cool like that. I want people to fan girl over me or fan boy over me. I want people to think I'm cool. I have a silly haircut. I have a silly mustache. My room is dirty. I... I don't know. So, yeah. Um. I, I really don't know, honestly. I, I think, I don't want to overthink. First of all, nothing matters anymore. I'm going back to Hong Kong. And after I come back, I'll go to USC. I'll restart my new life. I'll meet new people. And a lot of people I know will, most of the people, like, 99% of the people I know here will all be gone for my life anyways, which is sad, but you know, it happens. That's life. But I think Leslie probably still thinks that I'm going to stick around in CMD. And she probably thinks that, hey, you know, I can ease myself back into his life now and we can still be friends maybe. Or at least I hope that's what she thinks. She probably doesn't really care. Um, I don't know why, but I always fall in love with women who don't care. <laughs> but she probably thinks that and if I were to decide to stay behind I would probably think the same too maybe I could you know I know it doesn't matter but what if it does you know what if what if at some point we run into each other on CMD and we become friends again and we can just throw everything um, to the back and everything's just bridge under the water or water under the bridge or whatever and we could just restart and it would be nice and just watch movies together and whatever, you know. Or maybe you, some real romantic relationships can develop from then on out. You never know. But it's, a, it's fucking over. I'm leaving. And I hope she doesn't know that. I hope she's disappointed. She probably doesn't care. But if she does, I hope she's disappointed. I hope she's disappointed that I'm gone and I hope she misses me. And I hope that reinforces her idea that she's going to lose all her close friends at some point, one way or the other. And I hope that makes her depressed because she makes me depressed. She's so beautiful. I hate her so much. Um, and the fact that I'll be seeing her next Sunday, it's kind of a surreal thing to say. Like, what the fuck? Her? Real? But yeah, it is. I mean, it is... Isn't it as equally as surreal as 
I don't know, seeing Natalie again since late January or seeing that Mary has invited to connect with me on LinkedIn, even though I have nothing on my LinkedIn. <sighs> the girls of my life. <sighs> oh, well, it is what it is. I'm going to cook some pasta with meatballs now. All right, time now is um one twenty one p.m. on August fifteenth. Um, I slept from five twenty a.m. till one p.m. Essentially, uh, <laughs> it's great. I I think um, yeah, it's it's great. Good sleep. I had a horror nightmare though. I dreamed about going to a wedding with my family. Um, but it was very ill-prepared, like, you know, my phone wasn't properly charged, it was a very long journey, and, um, there's a lot of shit going wrong, I was in a car, and someone in front of me showed me a photo that, like, someone in front of me took a photo of me, and I was sitting in the back seat, and it was like a six people, seven people car, like a seven passenger car, I was at the very, very back, and that person took a photo of me and showed me the photo and literally in front of me on the same seat is this horrifying ugly demon that's like translucent like a dead nun and i was like what the fuck it was like kind of like a prank but it was really bad and suddenly i'm i'm like struggling to speak and i lost my voice and then I somehow made it out of the car. I was stuck. Everyone was gone suddenly. And I was stuck in the car. And then I tried to go into a church for the wedding. And it's this little chapel. And the church is a holy place. So going into it required like a lot of strength. Because I'm so unholy. Because of the demon in front of me. Yeah. It's kind of wild. So anyways, today's going to be another very chill day. Um, I don't know why am I not receiving call sheets to get back to the set of Isaac anymore. I feel like it's because of the whole transportation thing, because I don't drive. They realize that, you know, might as well not invite this guy to come back anymore because he can't drive and it's a fucking hassle. So maybe that's it. Maybe that one day I worked for them is it. Uh, which is good news because I literally have nothing more to gain by going there other than another Hong Kong girl is there, I guess. But I feel like eventually I'll run into her again. So, you know, we'll see. But, yeah. Um, I don't think they'll ever invite me back anymore. Just a one-off thing. 
and that's pretty much it um today i hope would be a lot more um a lot more productive i'm gonna film a couple reviews i'm gonna do some exercises if i can um i'm gonna you know watch more movies as i always do draw but also i should really start going outside and buying food because i'm gonna be gone in like a week so um i should really um start going to sawtell and buying takeout and walking back home and then eating at home so i'm gonna start doing that today i'm planning out my meal plans um and uh, wow i'm cutting it close because apparently i have like eight days left also i'm beginning to think whether i should begin booking the airbnb on t the 22nd or later like because yeah while i know it takes it probably takes a while for me to move all the stuff i think four days to move all the stuff is a little dramatic i'd say it may take two days um but um or maybe three because i have to set everything up so maybe august 23rd and then maybe i move in on the last day i keep sleeping here and then i move in on the last day maybe that's how so um Yeah, either way, I, I got to coordinate this well, but I'm narrowing all the Airbnbs down to the two Airbnbs and um, hopefully I make a choice today. Um, and that's great. I'm, I'm so glad that I started searching for Airbnbs like two, three weeks prior. Like, that's smart. <laughs> um, but yeah. And that's pretty much it for today. Um, my roommate, my new roommate, the Asian girl, turned off the aircon at 1 p.m. Thank God she didn't turn it off at like 8 a.m. or something. Because she also slept very late, like 3 a.m. I think. But of course I slept later. But yeah, it's interesting. Apparently she's also like a party type. She said she wants to go to my community college because it's near USC and UCLA. And because they have some really great parties. Come to think of it, I've never attended a night owl party. And I don't think I ever will. Or I don't know, maybe we'll see. But I have never attended a night owl party. Even though that was like something I would constantly talk about in like back in February or early March. Um, <laughs> but hilariously, I've been in LA, the capital of partying for one and a half years now and I still haven't gone to a real American party. Just goes to show how much of a loser I am. <laughs> but um you know and I haven't dated either but again came close came close and I don't want to talk about that anymore honestly. Well that's that for today. Alright this is um butter toffee apple pie. Let's try it out. Wow. Wow. Okay. Let's go. Okay, well, 
time for the taste. Okay. Cheers. Not bad. All right, time now is a uh, ten o one p.m. Just finished dinner, which is tatsu ramen. Hmm, intri intriguing, intriguing. Uh, <clears throat> so today, nothing all that crazy happened today. Um, but I guess uh, it's um, I actually I don't think I saw my roommate today, Ash. But I, so it's weird. I don't know what's, what the fuck's going on lately. I'm pretty sure they're both not here right now. Yes, both. But um, people keep entering and exiting my apartment. So at some point at around 3 p.m., suddenly a bunch of cleaners came and cleaned up the apartment, which is great. I desperately needed a cleaner. So the floor was squeaky clean, everything looked really fine, but because of that, I couldn't do my review until 5 p.m. But that's that. And then right after, like almost immediately after I did my reviews, um, at around 6.30, maybe 7 p.m., a new roommate came in. I heard a bunch of noise. I heard a girl's voice and a guy's voice. And at first I thought, oh my god, is it like Ashley's friend? So Ash is short for Ashley, I guess. Because yesterday she asked me if it's okay if she brings another friend in to help her move. And I said, oh, it's totally okay. Um, and I'm like, oh, it's a guy, okay. And then I just decided to just wait in my room and wait until the whole thing goes over. And then I go out um, to make myself lunch, which is... Onion omelet, not not even omelet. Onion onion scrambled eggs with garlic and then potatoes with ketchup. That's it. Um. So I was just waiting in my own room. Suddenly, I heard a knock on my door. And um. It's a girl. Um, but it's not the same girl I saw yesterday. It's another Asian American girl who dresses and makes up. In the most Californian way possible. Um, shorter than me. I She feels like she's older than me. But if she's not, I'm not going to be that surprised at this point. But she's like, oh, um, um, she's, um, she says something like, um, oh, uh, I'm moving some stuff in. Like, um, do you know um, if that's okay or not? Or something, I don't know. And I'm like, oh yeah, that's fine. And then I reminded her, oh, by the way, like, you know, I and my other roommate, like, agreed to not wearing shoes inside. And she's like, oh, okay, I mean, I'll clean it up, but can I keep it on now? And I'm like, oh, for sure, for sure, like, you're moving in. And that other guy is a tall Asian American guy as well. And that guy later, like, I was cooking again, and that guy was like, oh, um, is it okay if I leave the door slightly open? And also for the shoes, like, uh, I'm sorry about it, but, um, can I keep it on? And I know, like, you know, I'm Asian too, so I get it, you know, we don't wear shoes inside. And I'm like, oh, for sure, for sure, you know, you're moving in, so, you know, I get it, it's totally fine. Um, so that's that. And then, um, I spent a bit more time in my room. And then, um... I was going to go out to buy dinner and begin my um, <clears throat> streak of takeouts. Uh, today I went to Tatsu Ramen. But before that, I I keep hearing the other two girls, those two Asian American girls, chatting and laughing. And then that guy came back in and then all three of them went out somewhere. And I don't know where, but they were probably out partying or drinking or whatever. Um... But it's, hey, at least my wish got fulfilled. At the very end of my stay in this apartment, of course, I get an Asian girl roommate. 
Um, but uh, yeah, it's funny because I'm moving out in like a week anyways. Um, but there's that. So there's that. Um, anyways, I walked all the way to Tatsu Ramen, bought myself ramen, super fucking expensive. But I hope it's not as expensive in my future takeouts. But yeah, I had the ramen, really good, really filling. Um, and um, that's pretty much it for today. Nothing else happened. Um, Cliff responded to me. So Cliff hadn't like spoken to me for like two days, three days straight on Instagram. Like hadn't seen my messages. And that's kind of weird because usually he does and I know he's busy, but okay, weird. Maybe he's just really that busy, I guess. Um, that's one thing. The other thing is Nadja told me that she's invited to a post-production house called Enhanced Media uh, to help out with some post-production sound mixing for WoW. And I saw the credits and it's like very fucked up. First of all, I'm credited as a PA. I wish they would credit me as a BTS photographer. Cliff is credited as a PA, even though I thought Kuchio will make him credited as the editor. Third of all, the second AD went to Leia and not Michelle, even though Michelle's rightfully the second AD. I told Michelle that Michelle's really pissed about it and rightfully so. So lots of weird things, but it's, it's just really interesting. Yeah, and that's pretty much it for today. I'm still looking for Airbnbs, but I'm really narrowing it down to those two. And I think by tomorrow, I'll have an answer. Um, and uh, yeah, you know, it's very expensive, the Airbnb, but I think it's fine. I think um, it's just for less than a month. And um, and um, yeah, I think it's, it's fine. It's okay. I think... Um, I think it's okay. Yeah. Yeah. I think I can do it. Um, yeah. And then I'm going to look into the storage unit later, but so far so good, basically. Um, and, uh, not much else for today. Not much else. I really don't think Isaac's going to invite me back to PA, which is okay. Um, and yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I guess I still I still think about Leslie from time to time, even though it's been nearly two months since the phone call. And I guess one and a half months since 2001 of Space Odyssey. But I just don't know, man. Like, I, I really hope that, like, I know in, in months I'm going to look back and I, and I would be like, wow, why did I make those silly decisions? Like, that's crazy. Like my decision to confess to Leslie and and all that stuff is just, I wouldn't say unprofessional, but I would say it's still very irrational. Even though I, I was very calculated the way I confessed to her, but it's still very impulsive. Um, I was probably in a bit of a power trip, but even so, I think my feelings for her were, were valid and... I hope that years down the line, she would still notice me and I would make references. Like in the documentary, I will feature box 988 BMV variations because that's one of her favorite songs or one of her favorite pieces of music anyways. And I hope she would notice that and realize, God damn, this guy's in love with me. Or maybe years down the line, I would make references to her in my short films and i will remember that her favorite color is klein blue i just and i hope she i don't know feels all warm and fuzzy and i hope i hope she i know i say this all the time but i hope she thinks maybe we can get together but we'll, we never will and i hope she she's sad about it <laughs> even though that probably won't happen and it's okay um because it doesn't matter anymore um but yeah that's pretty much it for today really um i'll be hanging out with michelle tomorrow so that's gonna be very cool um yeah all right time now is 11 23 a.m on august 16th um yeah um 
Shoot. Damn. Okay. Um. Slept from 4.50 a.m. till, like, 11 a.m.-ish, I think. Um, which is not a lot of sleep, honestly. But, uh, it's fine. I woke up because my roommate, my new roommate turned off the aircon. Yes, I'm going back to that lifestyle again. I like how I know exactly the reason why I wake up. It's always because of the temperature change. At least she didn't turn off the aircon at 8 a.m. That would be very, very um, upsetting. I was going to wake up anyways because I need to wake up a little earlier today. But yeah, I hope I sleep earlier so that by the time I wake up, the aircon's still on. Um, but yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Uh, yesterday was kind of productive for me. Um, I, aside from... The fact that I didn't draw and or do exercises, I did everything I planned to do yesterday, which is kind of a rare. I watched four episodes of anime, I did a couple reviews, I edited a bunch of videos, like Japan vlog and whatever. Uh, I didn't edit college video, but I just wasn't really in the mood to. But yeah, for the most part, I was pretty productive yesterday, and I'm quite happy about that. Um... <sighs> Yeah, today's going to be fun. I'll be meeting Michelle at 1 p.m. Um, we'll watch Old Boy together. Maybe we'll go get Boba. I don't know. Um, and then after that... Um, yeah, and then after that... I don't know. Michelle said she wants to watch the movie early because she wants to fix her sleep schedule. But usually people watch movies late. At night or whatever. Like, I don't watch movies early. I thought she's in a hurry to leave. Uh, turns out she ain't, she isn't. Um, but yeah. That's pretty much it for today, really. I spoke with Andrew a little bit yesterday. Just wanted to check in with him. I asked him if he's he will be the editor for his short. And he said, yeah. And I sent him a screenshot of, like, my scripty notes. Like, the template. And he's like, oh, you're good, you're good. Like, don't worry about it. Like, I'll be shooting scenes out of chronology order and it's 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 gonna be fine, it's gonna be chill. And I'm like, okay. And I realize maybe I'm overdoing it, but also I'm not, right? A good scripty always checks in with the director and the editor first. I'm just doing it in advance. But uh, Yulia would be a tough act to follow up because I know Yulia is a really good, dedicated scripty um, but, you know, I'll try my best. Is it a little moronic to stay behind for nearly a whole month just to be scripty for someone's set and watch more movies? Maybe. Um, but it is what it is. Hopefully, um, I get down which exact Airbnb I'm, I'm staying at today and handle the public storage stuff. I'm still waiting for an email from the Universal Music Group. I emailed them two days ago what the fuck um maybe this isn't how you contact them i don't know this is so fucking weird um yeah and then i'm jealous maybe i'll do some drawing today maybe i'll do some exercise today i don't know um yeah These girls, though, they're really not a fan of cold. I'm, it's so hot in my room. My room is at least a couple degrees Celsius hotter than outside. Like, outside this room, at the living room. Which is one of the reasons why I need to go back to Hong Kong, is for the individualized AC, really. Um... Yeah, I can't believe it. Uh, in five days, I'll be moving, so... Fuck. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, that's that. I should really start packing. I really should. Um, 
Yeah, Tova just texted me asking me if I've been in contact with Skylar. No. I just, um, I don't know how to feel about this project anymore, honestly. I just want to start editing away. Um, I was just with Cliff Loba last night at like 3.40 a.m. Dude was awake. His sleep schedule is fucked, and he said he's not busy. He said he has nothing lined up for him for the rest of the year, which is, I don't know why. I thought he has tons of short films lined up. I mean, in my head, I can already name three short films. Justin Short, Andrew Short, and Keys, which we'll never know if it actually happens, but yeah. I think it's sometimes good to really just explain a little bit why did you make that film? Uh, he's going to invade my apartment to uh, do laundry. Are you? That's really good. Yo. Alright. Just back from Nijia. This is what I got. Small sandwiches. Uh, bok choy. Some mochi. Can of soda and some jelly, and some green onions. $19. <sighs> All right, time now is 10, 13 p.m. Um, talk about today a little bit and then I'll have dinner, but um, yeah, today was quite fun, I think. Um, I woke up and um, I don't know, I I hear Korean sometimes, and I'm like, is that Korean? I, it's so quiet and muffled, I can't tell, but turns out it is. So my, I guess the second Asian American girl also speaks Korean, and she would hang out with her other Korean friends. And I saw her and her friend who is very obese, also Korean. Um, and that friend was like, oh, I'm sorry about last night. If we were noisy and it's okay. And then, the roommate was like, oh, sorry about last night. And I'm like, oh, it's okay. And then she started cleaning up the floor, like vacuuming and like swabbing the floor, mopping the floor. And I'm like, oh, thank you for cleaning. And then a little bit later, the first um, um, Asian American girl was like, oh, um, I'm going to cook him soba tonight. And if you want some, I can make you some as well. And I'm like, uh, okay, we'll see. But thank you. But I probably won't. But... Hey, final, nice roommates. God, where have I been? Where have they been all the time? I'm sure if like I live with them for five months, I may start getting pissed at them again, but you know. <laughs> um, yeah, so there's that. Um, at around 1.15, I went to Landmark Noir to um, watch old boy with Michelle and I saw Michelle standing beside another woman um, Latina and I'm like who is that did Michelle bring a friend and I arrived it turns out it is um Daniela who is a student in film 33 last semester last last semester so from wow and uh, she was actually the first or I think the second AC of WoW alongside Aoba and sometimes Leslie was also the second AC and I saw them and we talked a little bit they were talking shit about Enzo and how like toxic and abusive Enzo is on set Enzo tried to go for DP but he didn't get it and he was pissed and he tried to be controlling and he tried to give creative suggestions to Eva the actual DP DP, um, even though it's actually the Indian professor who's the real DP, but, you know, 
Um, and then at some point, I didn't even, I didn't even talk about WoW. Like I didn't even talk about Leslie, but then suddenly Danielle started talking about Leslie, and Michelle immediately looked at me, like bro is so obvious. But Danielle was talking about Leslie and how oh who's that that Chinese girl uh, Leslie like. She was, like, I get it. She probably knows what she's doing, but she's so mean. And she was even mean towards Aoba. Like, Aoba was like, oh, where do I get the lens? And Leslie would be like, there, get it. And Daniela, who is older, like 30-something years old probably, went to Aoba and was like, hey, don't listen to her. If she's mean to you, I'll show you where the lenses are. And Leslie was very mean to everyone. Like, she was very mean to... Daniela and she I guess maybe it's because you know she was she was still sort of relatively new to the film scene so she didn't really know how to use the right marker for the slate so she used a permanent marker for the slate and she was doing something with a white tape on the slate and it fucked everything up and she went missing for a couple of days like she didn't even come so yeah very interesting it, and it's like it's girls like this that really make me go what a what a person what a personality like imagine other people talking about you and talking about how much of an asshole you were i guess in a way that makes her even more interesting of a character and it makes her even cooler you know if she's mean to everyone but she's nice to only me like exclusively that's such a satisfying feeling but this is also such a huge red flag like it's people like her you know so there's that. Um, <clears throat> I'm really quiet right now. It's ridiculous. Um, yeah, but anyways, um, I thought about getting boba with Michelle because we always get boba together. Um, but we just talked and talked and we went into the theater and we watched all the trailers and we watched the film. And Michelle was sitting to my left the whole time and she enjoyed the movie so much. She gasped, she was shocked, she laughed out loud. And it's crazy, because the first time I watched Old Boy, I watched it alone on a laptop, and it was a bit of a letdown. It wasn't crazy enough of an experience, but watching it on the big screen with Michelle right beside me, it was so much more, like, mind-blowing. So I really enjoyed this experience. Holy crap. Um, and it's funny, because right after we left... At the 4.30, I believe, p.m. screening of Old Boy, Ken came, but I never saw him. Um, right afterwards, Daniela left. And during the end credits of Old Boy, Michelle just, like, looked at me and was like... She was like... And I'm like... Yeah, like, like I'm, I'm happy I, I brought her to this film. Because this is the first Park chan film Michelle has seen. And I'm sure she probably hasn't even seen that many Korean films. Um, so, you know, I'm happy, like, hey, you know, she seemed she enjoyed it. And then after we left the theaters, Michelle just kept laughing for, like, five minutes straight. She was like, hold on, look, look away, look away. And I'm like, what, what? And she's like, look away, look away. Don't look at me. And she's like, you, I don't, you're special. You're, you're scaring me. You're definitely one of the most special person I've ever known. Like, not in that way, but you know you know what I mean. You know what I mean. And I'm like, what? So the movie was so traumatizing to her. And was so fucked up that she's like, wow, the only other film that I can think of that fucked me up even more is, like, Come and See. And she thinks this movie is a 9.5 to a 10 out of 10. So, you know. And, and I think that's partially because she's been watching so many classic films, like, 50s, 60s Hollywood films that are in the Hayes Code and are very tame in terms of swearing and sex and violence. And then you watch Old oh Boy, of course, it's like a night and day difference. For me, it's not because I watch tons of violent, sexual shit, depressing, traumatizing shit. Like, that's right up my alley. But for her, it's not. So she was like shook. Yeah, we walked all the way to the Boba place and then both, both of us were hungry. So instead, we went to Marugame Udon, which... I sort of didn't want to go at first because my roommate's back. One of them, I don't know. Um, because I want to save Marugame Udon as like the last 
place I go and try before I leave this place because that place is sort of special to me. That's the place I went to the first time I went to Sawtown. Um, but I'm like, you know, fuck it. So I'm Michelle went to Maragami Udon. I got this cold noodle udon dish. Got a couple of tempura. And then after that, she drank cold. So she was drinking this matcha latte or just matcha in the beginning when I saw her. And then she's drinking Coca-Cola. And then afterwards, we got over together. So she drank three drinks within like half a day. Um... And then, um, but yeah, we got Boba together, and then we walked and talked, and then we went to the video store beside Landmark New Art, the one that I brought Zara to, and both me and her, like, geeked out about movies, like, every section of movies there, we just geeked out, there are criterions there, there are animes there, there is even porn there, and I never knew, there's even a section for Hong Kong porn, which is, like, wild, um, I should have taken a look, like, just because it's, you know, for the culture, you know. But yeah, and then she left very soon after that. And then I walked all the way back down to Nijia Market to buy some groceries. And then I came back. That's it. But yeah, it was a really good hangout. Really, really good film. Um, and um, put a lot of... Made me rethink my stories and the way I write films and direct, I guess. But, yeah, it's just, I, Michelle kept saying, like, you're definitely one of the weirdest person I've ever met. And I told her, like, if you had known any of the people from my secondary school life, you would probably be shocked because I'm, like, normal in comparison. Like, just look at Natalie, look at Mary, look at fucking, I don't know, just, like, Keith. All of them are weirder than me by many times. So, yeah, there's that. But I guess, I think one of the reasons why I seem really weird right now is, of course, because I'm in LA and people are a lot tamer here. But also at the same time, I think it's because I let my quirkiness manifest. I don't hide them anymore because I don't want to hide them anymore. So, um, yeah, there's that. So I'm going to have dinner now. I think I'm not even that hungry, honestly. That marugame udon and the boba. Boba really fills you up. Um... But, um, yeah, I'm going to cook real fast, one sec, um, broccoli, steak, and potatoes, and then that's it for today. Hopefully, I get the Airbnb done by today, and um, the public storage as well. Thomas is going to come tomorrow. I'm going to um, go to Home Depot to check out some paper boxes, and um, we'll see. We'll see about things, but so far, it's working out, and... Um, yeah, looking forward to this Sunday, looking forward to going back to set um, as a scripty and not as a fucking PA um, and seeing Cliff and Leslie and Ariel and Naja, the big names, uh, and Carly, you know, and it's going to be very interesting and um, I feel like I'll have fun on that set, honestly. If anything, I, I feel like I'll have fun. Um, yeah. All right, time now is 3.13 a.m. I'm going to watch Forbes of Vinland Saga and go to bed. Just want to give a little more update on what just happened. Wow. Um, so at around 11 p.m., yeah, at around 10.30, I wanted to go out and cook dinner. But <clears throat> the first roommate, first Asian-American girl roommate, Ashley, who I think is Japanese-American, if she cooks soba, then probably, I don't know. And the other girl who actually speaks Korean <clears throat> and whose name is Rachel. So Rachel the Korean. Um, <clears throat> and Rachel's friend, the other large-sized Korean woman. Um, all three of them were outside. The large-sized Korean woman was on a chair playing with her phone, I guess, or just looking at her phone. And then both... Rachel and Ashley were like cleaning the kitchen. Oh, 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 yeah. So Rachel knocked on my door. No, she, she ding donged my doorbell and asked me, Oh, can, are you busy right now? And I'm like, Not really. And she's like, Oh, can you go outside and 
like sort out what stuff is yours and what stuff is not. And I'm like, okay. So I went out and they're dismantling the whole fucking kitchen. So like every cabinet, every like every slot, they're also dismantling and um, they're cleaning out everything with wet towels and like chlorine spray or whatever literally every cabinet and the entire fridge and so i got embarrassed like okay yeah i know it's like dirty so i helped sort out stuff and then i realized like those two girls a they're probably younger than me b i'm like a man right i, I feel bad so i also started helping out cleaning in general like i got a couple plastic bags from my room and I threw out a bunch of stuff. I helped clean up some stuff. Um, and I tried to be nice to them too. Because I don't want to come off standoffish. Because I really am sick of roommates that seem hostile towards me. I mean, Michael the Colombian boyfriend. Or Cindy at a few points. Um, yeah. I mean, of course, nowhere near as bad as like the hosts. But still. Um, so I was really nice and like, oh, I, I'm not sure who they are, who, whose stuff are these, but I will help throw them away. And they're like, oh, you're good. You're good. You can rest. And I'm like, yeah, I, I want to help out now. So, and then I asked them where the letters are. Cause I know there are letters. Apparently they put all those in an upper cabinet. Um, so I got all the letters and I sorted them through and only one letter out of like 80 something letters like males are for me all the other ones are all good to be thrown away so i helped clean up a bunch of stuff and i told them that i'm gonna cook so they're like oh i'm sorry we're so we're being super nice to each other for no reason um so i eventually cooked and while i was cooking rachel and ashley so the plus size korean woman was gone and it's just rachel and ashley and they both stood around and talked a little bit and I think it was Rachel or who asked me like oh by the way um do you think this is um a good place to live at like and like in this apartment and they're like yeah can you tell us like what are the problems you faced and then I just tell them oh sometimes there are cockroaches sometimes people just walk in randomly <laughs> The lights don't work sometimes and um and then i guess i got more into the conversation because i just want to be nice to them so i asked rachel um if she's a student and she's like oh yeah and i asked which college apparently she's also in the same college as me or i guess form formally formerly i guess um and then um so apparently they all teamed up because they're all asian american girls and she's actually Asian. She's not Asian American. Even though she has like perfect American accent. Turns out she's just Korean. She's not Korean American. She's just Korean. What the fuck? I couldn't have known. And then she asked me if I'm international. And I was like, yes. And she's like, well, you too. Um, and then um, I also mentioned Night Owl. Because I know like Ashley likes partying. Even though I don't do that. And I said, oh, it caters to like international students only. And Rachel's like, oh, of course. No, Ashley's like, oh, of course. Because now... Both I and Rachel are the internationals, and she's different. And we talked about how good the international counseling service is, which is okay, I guess.